Did you, uh, just taking it back to uh, uh, Hubbard, did he uh, ever have any conversations with you or that you recall or lectures about that sort of thing, about these kind of what we no, call paranormal uh, now? Hubbard, during that period at least, Hubbard was not a person that would sit down and discuss anything with anybody. He was a commander. They do this, do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to do this. Um, during the Allied Scientists of the World type of thing, he did describe to me, he did sit down and describe to me what he intended to do. Um, he wanted to set up a, a, a Dianetic community out in the desert. He wanted to build hydrogen bomb-proof shelters, and in those shelters he wanted to put the trade secrets of all the different industrialists. And if any nation wanted to start a war, they would be denied access to those trade secrets. Hmm. So this was really his first idea on, on building a Sea Org sort of community, which then developed into a Sea Org. But when the Allied scientists of the world failed, why well, he went on to other things. But he also, in that Allied scientists of the world, let's give you an insight on, on the nature of credit he gave to other people. As a uh, naval officer, he had access to a number of secrets, including a Canadian uh, evaluation of... Uh, of how well we're protected in the uh, sea lanes, Atlantic. I don't know whether it covered the Pacific, but it did the Atlantic. So he had a copy of that, and he was going to rewrite it under the name of the Allied Scientists of the World, without his name, but uh, without the proper authorship. He was just going to rewrite it and give it to the world. Okay. That was going to be his first publication. Uh, he's, he's a superb writer, a superb rewriter, too. And I'm convinced that no matter how brilliant he was, and I think he was, that uh, Ron Hubbard also absconded with a lot of other people's ideas, which he rewrote. Well, others have said that. And, have uh, they? Yeah. You know, I've not heard that anywhere.